Yeah, I've been good, man. I've been good. Just uh, just doing my thing, you know. That's Not much cool. going on. Yeah, just uh, working from home for Fitter and Faster and then just um, just loving life, you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. As you should, though. You know, that's, 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 as you should. Yeah, so Shane, I already hit record, so we're on, buddy. All right, sounds good. <laughs> it's on already. <laughs> like, this is All it. Right, cool. <laughs> What's going on, man? So... Crazy times, hey? Coronavirus everywhere. Oh, man, it's, it's starting to get rough. And, like, today at 3 o'clock, we, um, some Ireland announced that our Olympic trials have, uh, has been canceled in three weeks' time. So it's not going to be held on the 1st first, first of April, but they're going to move it. Um, they don't have a date yet because everything's happening so quickly. Uh, so we might do what the U.S. does and just move it, like, a month before. We don't know if Europeans is going to go ahead still. Um, because it's like, there's a lot of people, I know like, uh, Chel- I think it's called Cheltenham, which is a mm-hmm. horse racing event mm-hmm. that's going on right now. There's 10,000 people right there and they didn't shut that down. Oh, um, wow. and we were at the airport yesterday morning and we were supposed to go to Edinburgh for a swim meet and like, you know, like Duncan Scott's there, James Guy's there, Adam Pete is like a good, it was a good meet for like, you know, it was a big squad of us going. Um, we were about to get on the plane and they were like, meet us at Starbucks now at the airport. We get there. I'm like, oh, I know exactly what this is about. Like we're not going to it's a meet. So we ended up, um, yeah, heading home. And, um, but now we're racing. Like we, I raced this morning, raced tonight, uh, racing tomorrow morning. So we're still getting the good racing in. Um, but it just sucks not to race those other competitors because, um, yeah, like we could have got stuck in your, like in Scotland yeah, and, and like, you just never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I guess that's a big fear. It's not so much going somewhere, but it's getting stuck somewhere, right? It's getting stuck somewhere. And, like, the statistics now are just, like, it's absolutely, like, crazy on how, like, quickly you can get it. Uh, we, Ireland, just had their first um, death uh, yesterday or two days ago. But it was, like, a 90-year-old, 91-year-old woman who, like, had heart issues and, like, she passed away, sadly, because of it. But when people have bad immune systems or older people or someone who has recently been smoker or was a smoker who had bad lungs, cause it's such a heavy, like respiratory, like a lung, like infection. It really, it really gets them. Yeah. It's crazy though. But I always felt like, uh, as a, as an elite athlete, your, your immune system was kind of on that edge of like really good, but also really bad, you know, because yeah. we push our bodies so hard. Mm-hmm. And you're training at a real intense level every day. And then yeah. you obviously have to try and recover from that. So the immune system is on high alert just from the training that you're doing, right? Oh, hundred um, percent. Luckily after worlds, um, I had a whole different mentality. I took over my new own nutrition. There's certain vitamins I've been taking and all this stuff. So I've been really, really good. And if I get like a little tickle in my, like, you know, in my throat or if i feel something that's off i hit up the doctor immediately and like i get on something i ask him what what's what, what's his advice um because i like you can't just get sick you need to train properly you need to take care of your body because i mean my body is my job and you know that just as well yeah um but no it's crazy and like how like that we we fiddle with that fine line you know and yeah. like it's also nutrition comes into play it's like if you eat well you're going to be more or less like healthier in, in the long run, you know, and your immune system will be up. But if you start eating bad and your immune system is going to be shot and you're going to be more acceptable to like colds and ear infections and all that stuff. So it's crazy. Yeah. Are you worried that the Olympics will get canceled at this point? Um, no, as athletes, um, you have to be prepared for uh, like multiple situations, but as an athlete as alone, like we, and even yourself, like, we're very good at adapting and if you have to adapt and you have to be good, you have to kind of like take a step back, realize what you need to do, but you still need to be on your game. Um, yeah. And, but if it happens, it happens, but it's not an a personal thing. Everyone's affected by it. So everyone else is in the same boat. Um, you know, I'm a little disappointed that we don't have the Olympic trials for us in three weeks time because like I'm ready to go. Um, but you know, just that's shit happens. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So you think that right now they're talking about just pushing it back maybe like a couple of weeks or a month or something like that? Yeah. So yeah. possibly June. Oh, okay. So a month, a month before the Olympics. 
Yeah, yeah. We don't know. We don't know anything at this point right now. We just found that out today that the trials is canceled, but it's going to be moved. But we don't know when it's going to be or anything like that. But that's the same thing with Italy. Same thing with France. Then, then like everything, hung, like, hung, like the Hungary, the Hungary is about to, they're in a state of emergency right now. And yeah. they're about to like shut down all the pools. Luckily with Ireland, um, our pool and our gym is government owned. So we can dic- they can dictate, we can be in there. So right now we have access to the pool. We have yeah. access to our weight room. So we're very, very lucky that we have that. Other people in Europe don't. They yeah. shut down everything. Yeah. And that's where it's getting to in America right now. Uh, just today, the pools are getting shut down left and right. And a lot of the athletes that I'm talking to, I talked to some of the Texas swimmers today and some other people, and they they're, they're just don't know. They, they don't have the information. And they're like yes. you. Yeah. Where are you getting your information from now in regards to what's happening with Swim Island? Yeah. So as of right now, everything's happening so fast and a lot of people are confused on what's going on. Um, but luckily in the, for the past two weeks, we've been very, very informed getting updates on emails from the medical staff from Sport Ireland. Um, they've been very proactive. Like we can't go into the gym unless we have to do a scan. They implemented that in the beginning of this week where we have to fill out a questionnaire. We have to wash our hands and then gel and then fill out this questionnaire and then take our own temperatures to make sure that we have like, you know, they're mm. like, that we're, that we're good. Um, they're minimizing all foot traffic. So we had some assistant coaches. We don't have them now because they're only, it's only the head coach and the head assistant coach now only working with us to minimize foot traffic. Um, and the same thing in the Institute as well. Like this with the sport Institute was where we lift. Um, so they're really good with like making sure you wash your hands, making sure you wipe down everything. They've always had disinfectant wipes in the gym to begin with. Um, but we've been really informed on what's happening and making sure that we're taking the necessary steps. Uh, we just got an app this uh, today where we have to fill out every single day. If we have a cough or if we have the sniffles or if we have the aches or aches or pains or a fever, we have to jot that down. If we say yes to any of them, we have to take a 24 to a 48 hour mandatory quarantine by ourselves and that's it. There's no questions asked, that's it. You're quarantined for that time and then you have to reevaluate yourself again to see if you're good enough so we have things in play and the thing that a lot of people are confused about it's happening so fast people are just very confused they don't have the information to know what's going on basically yeah right uh, i love your hands man you've got beautiful hands but try not oh, to shove them you. in front of the camera right <laughs> <laughs> um, it's almost like at the bottom of my screen <laughs> instead of the top so it's a bit different yeah you got a wee computer man uh you need an upgrade <laughs> Uh, what about your parents and, and stuff that, you know, they live in, in America. Uh, yeah. Are you, are you fearful for your family or what's going on? How do you communicate with them? So, I mean, I, I keep in touch with them. I just ordered my dad, like that was in like a smoker most of his life. So I ordered him like some vitamins, like a multivitamin. So you can start taking that. Just so you have a better health. Cause it does affect, you know, smokers in general because of their respiratory system and their lungs a little bit easier. So I sent him like, this like crazy like multivitamin that has everything in it which is good uh my mom she's been prepared been prepared for this she always overstocks everything um it, but it's just like the thing is it's like if you're healthy if you have a good immune system if you eat well wash your hands you take care of the things that you need to take care of you'll most likely be okay yeah um, but they're doing they're doing okay um uh, we just got a little puppy so they're they're occupied by that so oh, yeah. Nice. Fun days, as you know. <laughs> nice. Now, what are the conditions that you live in? Uh, how, how, what's the setup in terms of living quarters for you? In, uh, what's the name of the place that you, you're working out? What do they call it? So it's called the, um, the Irish National Sports Campus, which is this massive campus. It's like a 500-acre property. There's like still, they still farm on this property, which is crazy. And it's oh, like wow. right outside Dublin. They have like a 50-meter pool and a diving well, then like an aqua zone attached to it. They have um, a brand new indoor rugby fields and soccer fields. They have a brand new indoor track and basketball and also gymnasium. And then they have like a indoor state of the art um, weight facility and a hundred meter, um, 140 meter track as well. That's indoors. They have like a diving pit. Um, then like a lot of like, you know, all the some Ireland offices, all like the offices for all the sports are there. Sport Ireland is also in, on this campus as well. So that's like only about seven to 10 minutes away from where I live, but I live by myself, which is great. 
So oh, okay. I'm not with anyone else. Um, I can like kind of focus on my own things, keep everything clean. I'm a very neat person to begin with. So things are taken care of. By so my you just family. drive to and from the venues? Yeah. So I drive into from like, you know, the pool, which is like two roads, which is great. Oh, okay, cool. And, and you, you just got a car sponsorship, right? Didn't you? Yeah. So about a year ago when I made my decision to come back over here, I was like looking into car sponsorships, but then this company called Windsor Motor Groups, which is like the biggest mo like basically like franchise of car dealerships here. Mm. So I got spent, uh, sponsored by them, but it's like with a Renault, it's a French company, but it's a really cool car. It's like a little, uh, Jeep Cherokee. So it's like okay. a small SUV. Mm -hmm. It was great though. And it's stick shift as well. So yeah. I feel like just like nah, 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 driving around. Nice. So it's cool. Nice. And so you're out there training, you're in this environment that is high performance. What do you guys yeah. do for fun? Like how do you, how do you kind of unwind and just take time off away from the pool? Um, so as you, I mean, you follow me on Instagram, love barbecue. And I just go outside on the, like a nice <laughs> sunny day, even though it's like probably about like, oh, like 40 degrees out like still sun's out i'm barbecuing it doesn't matter uh, so i barbecue a lot um in dublin it's great it's really easy to get into dublin um they have a lot of good food a lot of good places so like, i'll go on like dates and everything like that just to you know go in try the new foods um and like you know try not to, like try not to drink or anything like that but you cannot beat a good pint of guinness over here it's like something else about it so it's like a loaf of bread right oh it's like a meal in itself. Like you have two and you feel it, but like, that's all you need. It's just, it's just so good. It's just different over here. Um, but then I have, I have a lot of family here. So my dad, he's a one out of 10. Um, and he's the only one living in, in the States right now. Uh -huh. So all nine of them are still living in this County in uh, County leash in Port Arlington. And they all live like in that town still. So it's great. So I'll go down there on the weekends, it's about an hour away from Dublin, um, in the country. And I'll go down there and, um, either go watch my cousin, Play, play get like football or basketball or just go up to like down to like the little place down there to eat during like you know for sunday dinner or anything like that so yeah just keep myself occupied plus playstation helps as well <laughs> do they make fun of you because you've got the american accent in the family i get that shit every single day from the boys <laughs> i train with oh so, really i am who i am you know i'm irish american so you take it, but my family, my family doesn't do it. They, they love me regardless. So they don't, they don't really care. They see yeah. me as an Irishman. So. Yeah. Yeah. When did your parents, why did they decide to move to America in the first place? Obviously one of 10, why would, why would he want to leave his family? Yeah. So my mom is originally from here. Her, her grandparents were from Ireland. Um, my dad actually was, he's six, four. So he's a bit taller. He's a big guy. He actually came over to play Gaelic football oh. um, in like the town that he was like from it's very very small like very like very small town he was the one that no, it was known to get out because uh, he was that good with sport mm. um so he went over and traveled the states then played gaelic football you know he traveled san francisco boston um new york and then he uh, went to philadelphia met my mom and then um, he actually snuck in from canada all over a boat he had paid someone back in like the 80s to sneak him in through canada on a boat um, and then my grand, my grandfather picked him up with my mom and then, yeah, then he just got a relationship and then they had me and then, then, then that's it. <laughs> yeah. But I got to stay in. Yeah. That's, that's awesome, man. It's, yeah. it's a crazy story, but that's kind of the way it goes with immigrants, right? Yeah, um, at least back then. So was it a hard decision for you to want to represent Ireland uh, internationally? Uh, when I first made the decision to switch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was like my junior year of college and I know it was coming up and I've always had my dual citizenship, um, for Ireland. I've always had two passports. Um, I forgot that when I was a kid, basically, um, it was always a card on the table and my mom is very good about like, listen, like it's, it's, here's just an option. We'll get the Irish passport. Um, all this, um, it's just, she always just kept it in the back of her mind. It's always reminded me like maybe like once every two years and then junior year came around. And I had to really like take a step back and kind of realize what I needed to do to better my future. You know, no matter how much criticism I get from like leaving USA or joining Ireland. Um, but if I had to do it again, I would like, I would do the, still do the same exact thing. I have um, four medals for Ireland and I love representing Ireland. And I literally got to travel the world because of it. I got to meet so many new people. Um, and like a lot of, I have friends all over the world now and like mm. literally good relationships. Um, and you know, when I made the decision, I literally 
made sure I had my scholarship set up for my senior year at Penn State. And once I secured that, I dropped everything, made a decision in two days, and I moved to Ireland. And yeah, they helped me out. So I'm very, very happy with my decision. Yeah. I mean, going back to that, you're obviously a super talented kid in high school, and you had um, a lot of schools coming after you, and you had a lot of choices. You know, I know you personally, and we ha we've had some time together uh, being able to coach you and, and watch you swim and, and on mm -hmm. multiple different levels. But, um, and I actually recruited you to Auburn as well, had you yeah. come out. Oh, but, yeah. but um, you know, what, what was, I, I know for you, you, you struggled uh, a little early on uh, in your oh, yeah. college career. Oh, yeah. and, and, I, and I think you, uh, the thing I like about you is you, you lay a lot of the blame on yourself, you know, but you learn your lessons. So what are oh, some of the lessons yeah. you learned uh, growing, growing up through yeah. college? No, I mean, like, you know, I was like first in the country coming out of my class, like in the 100 free and 100 back, you know, and I thought I was like top shit, you know, like I thought like oh, Penn State, big school, they'll, they'll, they'll take care of me, you know um and I was just lazy it was pure laziness and like go to like you know my freshman year like I never did doubles I never lifted in high school I didn't really care about swimming too much you know I was just like went with it my senior year because I, it just came more naturally to me you know so when I was deciding like schools I ended up deciding Penn State and you know and I get there and, you know, like they were pretty good. The academic support was all there. I just never used it. You know, it was the first time doing doubles, uh, first time lifting. So like, you know, 8 a.m. going from like 5 a.m. like practice mm -hmm. to an 8 a.m. That was hard for me. You know, it was very, very hard. I was very, very young. But the thing is, it's like it sucked because I would have been like top eight in the 100 free, top eight in the 100 back at NCAAs that year and a top 16 at, in the 50 free. You know, when I went to like Virginia Tech at a sectional meet um which is kind of like you know I still have that record there which is quite funny but I'm glad that that happened because I learned more about myself and what I needed to do you know I was rock bottom and I was going to quit swimming I was going to leave school but you know I met with this um, woman that was there and you know she could have made me eligible but she didn't um because um she was like you're going to come back to me in like three years and you're going to say you're going to thank me because you're going to learn a very valuable life lesson on how to persevere, how to be determined and learn about, learn from your mistakes. And you know what, the next day I got like a, when I like found out about like when I was being uneligible, which is, uh, he called, John Hark has basically called me out in front of my whole team at a team meeting in spring break. It was awful. One of the worst experience I've ever had, but you know, it hit me hard. John was a truthful guy. So he, um, yeah, it was rough, but you know what? I got a mentor, changed my life around. I made Dean's List for the next three semesters. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, so I really, really turned my um, my act around, and like, I actually enjoyed going to school. I took everything completely different and just worked my ass off for it. You know, we always had the study hall hours. Mm. For us at the time, it was eight mandatory study hall hours, but I was doing about 20 to 24 hours um, in study hall. Oh, wow. So, so I had to work that hard, you know, it's just, that's what I needed to do. And it was a lot of work and I used every single thing that Penn State offered to help me with it. But I mean, I struggled with academics, but you know what? I came out with a degree and good grades and, you know, made, you know, I'm a Penn State alum. So very happy with it. Yeah. It sounds like you were making the decision to not do anything. And then you made the decision to to do everything you know above yeah. and beyond knowing that look i can't get away with just the bare minimum either like i have to push myself otherwise i'm going to get distracted and i'm going to get pulled in different directions oh, yeah exactly know? and i kind of realized you know i had to sit, sit down with um aaron workman and john hargis and they kind of helped me like kind of figure out my real talent and everything like that and especially after when i dropped some like really fast times at my little sectional meet I was like, I have something I could definitely do something. And like, you know, that summer as well, I really stepped my stuff up because I ended up going to school in the summer as well. Um, and like, I ended up like going like 24th at U.S. National Trial, like at U.S. Olympic Trials in 2012 was like 56.3. Mm. And then eight months later, after doing all the proper training, I dropped down to 53.8. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So it's like, it's just, and like, I just beat that time last year. You know, it oh, took really? me six and a half years to beat that 100 back time, which is just mad. But mm. now, like, I'm dropping, like, times in all these other events, like 100 free, like 100, 100 fly now, mm. doing 100 fly now, which is odd. 
Um, so it just, it just kind of helped me realize like the talent I had and I had to do it, you know, I had to suck up my, like my pride and all that stuff and just do what I needed to do. And at the time, my family's not a very rich family. You know, we, we really had to work to, you know, to get where I'm at. My family had to. So it's like, I needed like to get my degree to better my future. And also I'm coming out debt free, you know, as mm -hmm. an 18 year old like kid making that decision. And then a 19 year old kid, like persevering and going through that made the right decision. I would do it all over again as well. Yeah. What did you end up getting your degree in? It was um, basically event management. Okay. Nice. So I ended up working with the Penn State athletic department and I'm working like 50 hour weeks, like as a whole semester. And it was absolutely crazy. Like the weekends are crazy. Work the football games, volleyball games, oh, softball wow. games, soccer games. And like the football games are mad. Like we can, our stadium seats like 111,000 people. Mm. And I did everything. Like, say if a game started at 12 o'clock, we I had to be there at, like, 5.30 in the morning for oh, a meeting. Wow. wow. So it was big. And I was on the field, too, during the game, which is kind of cool, like, checking credentials, doing security checks, making sure that, like, the recruits are behind a certain line. Then I had to go up and, like, like scan tickets. Like, I did everything you can think of. It was nuts. But I mm. loved the job, though. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll get you ready for life because that's really, that's, that's real life, you know, getting in yeah. and, and, you know, going from 5am to when it closes, that's, that's a normal yeah. job, you know? So, and like, I was also training, trying to train 20 hours a week too, which is wow. crazy as well. So I was doing like 70 hour weeks, which is mad. Wow. Wow. So yeah. who coaches you now? Who's your main coach? So it's Ben Hickson. Um, he's been the head coach at the here in Dublin for about three years now. And he came from Sterling um, and he coached, he's a very good brushstroke or uh, brushstroke coach. He coached uh, Ross Murdoch, um, Andrew, I'm forgetting his last name. He was in the last Olympics as well, but he was also like Duncan Scott also still trains at Sterling is um, in Scotland. He's a Scottish guy. So mm. we have a very, he's about like, he just turned like 32, 33. So we have a very young coaching staff, which is absolutely great because they understand like you know us a little bit more than like an older generation you know like um like our, i'm not saying like our old coach was peter banks which great guy yeah but he's just a little older so he doesn't understand like what we kind of go through and like certain styles so just different yeah yeah what are the things that you enjoy doing in the water for your training so for me i love uh i just love racing and like i like i love just getting up and racing and like you know um, I just picked up like the hundred fly just decided to do it like two weeks ago and like I go like 53 one first time doing the hundred fly no, no, I was like oh this is weird like I don't and like I kind of like didn't know how to swim it so now I'm doing it again tomorrow tomorrow morning but I just love calling out people and like off events and just racing them you know mm -hmm. just like all right let's do like like a 50 breaststroke to this guy Derek Green fast as all hell in that mm -hmm. and I would just try to do it or race my friend Brendan Highland who owns the national record in the 100 fly he's like a 52 mid but now like you know it's just good just to get that competitive raceness and being competitive um, I love my power buckets I love the stretch cord work and the speed work um, but you know I love working more like I'm actually the first time in my life where I'm actually love training and I love the grind because I'm getting better at it and I'm also, my aerobic capacity is completely higher up where I'm racing, like, my friend Brendan, who's pretty good in a 600 IM in practice, like, getting warmed up for a meet, which I would never be able to do that back in the day. But now I'm actually, like, back-ending them and stuff like that, which is just great. Oh, wow. So how many times are you actually in the water and then how many times are you in the gym per week? So I'm in the gym three times a week, um, which, like, I like that. So two of them are main heavy lifts. So I'm going, like, like 115 kg on a power clean, which is like oh, maybe like 260 pounds, 250 mm -hmm. pounds. Um, doing multiple reps at that and getting up to like um, 220 for kg for power squats, which is like probably about like maybe like what would, what would that be in pounds? I don't know, like 460 or something? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's like, I'm getting really, really strong. So I'll have two main power blocks, but then one of them is more of a uh, cardio workout and a more of like a higher metabolic rate and getting like, you know, like 40 kg or 50 kg on a bar, which is like 90 pounds. 
but like doing multiple reps, like so six reps of hand clean, six front squats, six military presses, six bent over rows, six um, RDLs, and six like hand cleans again, and then jump on a bike for two minutes at a certain RPM. But I have to do that like four times. Oh, you know, so the bike is kind of the recovery in the middle? Yeah, but like also like I have to keep it at a certain RPM mm. where like I'm still working, where my heart rate is just like just mm. gunning, 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 and gunning. Um, and then I'm on the water, Monday I'm in the water once, uh, Tuesday I'm in the water once, Wednesday once, Thursday once, Friday maybe once or twice, and then Saturday once as well. Oh, it's not too much in the water then. Not too much in the water, but we get done what we need to get done then. Like, that's the thing. Like, there'll be like three to 4K in, um, in a practice, but they're very, very particular. But it works. Yeah. Have you found that your kick or your leg endurance has improved by doing the cycling in between rounds in the gym or not? I believe so. Yeah, no. I just feel like I'm able just to truck a little bit more on the back mm. end because I used to be being a pure sprinter, like – yeah, and the same with yourself. We would try to go out as fast as we can and then, like, pray to God, like, we'll, we'll, we'll hold on. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the last bit. But now it's, like, I'm going out with ease and, like, coming home even harder, you know, and it's all coming from my legs. Yeah. You know, my leg drive is just so good right now. And I think it's because we did a lot of circuits in the beginning in September. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that. So I think we're starting to get that point now where – I love that kind of higher metabolic rate and also like just that more of that higher heart rate all the time, harder on the lungs. You need to train your lungs in the water, but also out of the water as well, I believe. Yeah. Now you're, um, what are the, what's the event you would say that you're most focused on trying to get on the podium at the Olympics in? Um, the hundred back for sure. Cause I was, um, I was a semifinalist in the last Olympics um, and I'm swimming a little bit better, like actually much better now than what it was beforehand. Um, I'm a lot leaner. I'm a lot like stronger now. So I'm light, I'm lean, um, I'm feeling really good in the water. So all those things are just, I know once I took like comes time, like taper time, I'm going to drop. It's not the fact like just how, if I'm going to get the A cut, it's about how far am I going to get underneath the A cut where like 52 talk is actually starting to come around now. Mm. So, which is I'm just really excited for it. What do you think it'll take to get in the A final of the 100 back? I believe it's going to be about 53-0. I think 53-0 or 52-8. We'll mm -hmm. definitely, I think, we'll get in there. Yeah. That's what I think. Every Everything's starting to get a lot faster. Yeah. yeah. yeah the breaststroke's faster, the butterfly's faster than the 100 back. And, like, the 100 back was the biggest drop from the last Olympic qualifi qualification to this one. Because it was 54, 3, 5, and now it's 53, 8, 5. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah big jump. Big drop. Yeah, big, big jump. Yeah. Is the 100 free something that you still got your sights on as well? Yeah. No, I, I, I think so. I mean, now I'm more consistent with, like, 49. Like, I went, like, 49, 3 this morning. So I was, like, pretty comfortable at, and it's, like, like think like that's the best in season swim by me and we did it on like this little speaker thing where like it, it's an automatic time where it starts you and it's 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 pretty legit so i'm pretty confident in that it's just my freestyle's feeling really good right now and i think that's why my fly has been pretty good as well it's just things are just being getting really connected you know it's mm. just that type of season type of se time a season where things are just falling in place all yeah. the hard work and everything's coming into play now so it's good how old are you now I just turned 26 in January, at the end of January. Oh, cool. So you see yourself possibly going to the next Olympics? Yeah. I mean, look at Felipe Lima. <laughs> All those other Brazilians, they're old and they're still yeah, fast. So he's an old man. I'm enjoying it. You know, he's his old man. I'll make sure we tell him that too. Um, no, I think, you know, I'm still going best times in a lot of my events and I still believe I have a lot more to give. So I think – especially with this all at the ISL league starting to come up and everything like that. I think I'm, I, I know I'm going to still swim. Yeah. Um, I'm going to still swim until I don't enjoy it anymore. And like, I'm literally love training, love racing fast. And I love like just traveling and meeting new people, going to different meets and like everything's just falling to play. I enjoy it so much. So yeah, I do see myself swimming for a good bit now. Yeah. Well on that, I mean, you had an experience, uh, you were able to come to one meet for the LA current and, and, race in the isl what was your what was your experience with that like it was great no it was absolutely amazing just to see the crowd you know that we had like we filled it out absolutely packed it out and it's just 
that's one of the other reasons why I'm like so more exciting about the following the next season and like getting part of that, trying to be a part of that again. And just, it just kind of rekindled another like fire underneath me that like I haven't had in a while. It's just like, I didn't expect the skins to be that crazy. That was, I was passed out from cheering so much and like the excitement, even at the end at the, the U S Derby, like just absolutely going crazy over that. And it was just, a, just an amazing experience and the fans loved it. And I had a lot of family there too. And they, they absolutely loved it. And they've been to like duel in the pool uh, when I represented USA and against the European all-stars in 2013. And they're saying that the ISL was better than that, yeah. which is that's, that's saying something, you know? Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, I know, I know we loved having you. We'd love to have you back too, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I get I'll get Lenny on that. <clears throat> um all right, well cool man. So listen, um so what else then? I mean, you're you're just kind of sitting waiting now and and just and just training. So I guess that's all you yeah. can do, right? Like that's like yeah, that's the only thing we can do because everything's happening so fast that we don't know really what's going on. We don't know what the rest of the worlds are going to be like worlds are going to do because it kind of just got into the United States and like, you know, someone estimated that like 10 million people could die in the United States if they don't take care of this, if they don't take care of it, like take care of it seriously, you know, like Trump saying it's like fake news and all that. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's something that could just be, you know, the media blowing it up, which I don't think it is. It's just, it is very contagious. So I don't know. You just have to see just, but you know, if you take care of yourself, do what you need to do, take care of your family, take care of your loved ones, you know, and everything will be okay. Yeah. Well, that's good advice, man, and uh, that's pretty much all we can do right now. So it's changing hour by hour, and we just have to sit back and wait. But I'm I'm hoping you guys can still get your training in, uh, and that's yeah. and that's worldwide. You know, I don't want I don't want pools to be closing down. I don't want athletes to be sitting at home doing nothing. That's the worst feeling too, right? Is just being mm-hmm. out of out of your element, you know, when they take that away from you. I always used to hate Christmas time when, you know, family was, families would get together for like three or four days and they'd just yeah. be eating as much as they could and drinking and just sitting around and, and I'd be like itchy. I'm like, I got to get to practice. Like get me to a yeah. pool. That was me. That was me this, um, this Christmas. Now it was crazy. Cause it's like, you know, we had our, um, we had like Europeans and everything like that, but like we still had to focus on our Olympic trials. It's Olympic year, um, but like it was great seeing the family. I love my family. But they yeah. are crazy, you know. Like you need your own time. So I would go to the gym for like three hours. I would lift for an hour and a half, and then swim for an hour and a half, like every single day, just to like you know, just to get it. You know, did more than what I was supposed to, but like it, it's you, hard work will pay off. You know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I hope you guys get to do what you need to do. Yeah, um, you. you know I love MMA, and obviously you're you're, you're from the the country of my favorite MMA Talk fighter, <laughs> Conor McGregor, man. So uh, how is how is he uh, looked at over there in Ireland? Um, it's it's a lot of his recent recent actions. They haven't been Ireland. Really, doesn't really want to associate himself like with, like with him anymore because of all the bad things you know i don't know if you heard over like him punching an old man at a bar that he went into because oh, yeah. he refused, refused a, a, a proper 12 drink mm. um which i'm not a fan of it either which is oh man it's bad compared to the other stuff i can like get here you know in ireland and um yeah it's it's just it's a lot of like he we we really, really embraced them. We really, really did, you know, and like, he's everywhere, you know, and we were so, we're like, Ireland is such a proud country in their sport. It's, I'd never experienced that anywhere else. And like, you know, I've been around like Europe already, been around the world. I've never experienced anything about Irish sport. It's absolutely amazing here. Um, And like, you know, it's just a lot of actions will just kind of deplete on what you can really do. But now he's turning his life around. He's back, uh, he's back being the champ champ. So, Mm It's, it's great. No, it's like people are starting to come around. You know, he's turn, starting to turn his life around a little bit more and being a, a professional like he should be. And it's great. And we love seeing people kind of come through rock bottom and come up and persevere. And it's great. So, yeah, it's just a, it's a rocky one, but it's good, though. Yeah. How would you categorize the Irish people in general? Like what what what? you know what drives them what what do you how do you you know if you kind of generalize in, in terms of like what makes the irish people irish like what do you think um it's definitely our culture we definitely have like a very rich and very we have so much history here you know it's like 
everyone like what do you think of the Irish when I ask you about the Irish when the Irish pops up in your head what do you think I mean the stereotypes you know like <laughs> Irish are, Irish are just crazy you know you don't want to get into a fight with an Irishman and they just love to have a good time I mean, yeah. they're very very yeah. loyal from what I can tell like very loyal to their country and to their flag and to the people um, but then obviously, you know, I, I know enough about Ireland to know that, you know, you've got things like the IRA and, and, and other yeah. things that, you know, I don't know a lot about it, but obviously you've got your own issues and your own problems. But from what I know about Irish people, they're very tough and, um, got like a, a worker mentality, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're a very, very proud country, you know, and that like, and that's like everyone, you know, everyone always will come in. Um, we were very good at being competitive. You know, that's why our, like our sports and like our counties and the Gaelic football that we have and the hurling that we have and the camogie. It's, it's great that we have our own national sport. It's something so unique that's not played anywhere else. Like if you're going to see it anywhere else, it's going to be in the States, but it's all the Irish playing it, which is great. Um, and you should definitely look up a video of like hurling and Gaelic football. Crazy, crazy, crazy sport. Yeah. It's nuts. And, um, but no, it's like we do have like kind of like a stereotype of like, you know, like all the drinking and all that stuff. But like the thing is, it's like it's not like that because it's like we have we have so many sports going on that you'll just go down to the local pub and watch like, you know, the Premier League or watch a Gaelic football match or a hurling match. It's more of a social aspect. And like, you know, the greatest thing here, um, it's like, oh, we'll go out and have a good bit of crack. Have mm. you ever heard that saying before? Yeah, yeah, I've heard the crack saying, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, or, or like, what's the crack? And like, yeah, what's when the I, crack? Yeah. Like, so that basically, like, the crack is like, what's going on? Like, oh, let's go out and have a good bit of fun. Um, it's just like that's the thing. It's like you work hard, but then you also play hard. You know, like you have to enjoy life at the fullest. You know, and like, there's a lot of opportunities to do that. And Dublin's a great city. Ireland's a great country. You know. Yeah. Does it suck to be beaten by Australia and everything? Yeah, man, that's kind of rough. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have to throw my little Australian Listen, we stuff have our in there, moments. You know? We have our moments for sure. No, you guys are good, man. You guys are good yeah. at everything. Tough, tough Irish bastards, we call you. Um, yeah, no, we, we are tough. I'm like, you know, the investment that like, you know, Ireland's starting to put into all the athletics now and all the sports, like we're starting to see big, big improvements in the younger generation and even all across the whole board, like, you know, that even in the Irish swimming, you know, in the past three years, we made huge steps, you know, and it's great that we're like, we're starting to be more recognized on the pool deck, more recognized in the world. And everyone's looking over at us like, wow, they have a lot more people. What are they doing? And people are coming over and like, what are they doing right there? Like, why are they doing that? Like, they're asking us. And it's, it's, it's great that like, you know, we're, we're we have a presence and yeah. we're not stopping that as well. Well, you're definitely leading the way, man. You're a role model for all Irish athletes coming up and, and you're doing really good things. And I know that you work hard. I know that you're passionate. I know you like to have fun, but we all do. And so I have fun working hard though. That's the, yeah, that's the thing, you know, exactly. You do it with a smile on your face, man. I think that's what's so appealing, you know, so people mm -hmm. are drawn to you. So, um, love what you're doing, man. Thanks for the time today and, uh, yeah, good thank luck. You, Brad. Appreciate it. Yeah. Keep going hard, man. And we'll, hopefully we'll see you swimming fast soon. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Brett. All right, take care, bud. See you.